Hello, I am here to show you about Toon Do. Toon Do is a great way to make comics. This um, is a free feature if you just sign up and I'll go through the step-by-step -step directions on how to do that. As well as there is four teachers. Um, it is a paid subscription to Toon Do Spaces. And here's a little bit of information about that. Um, you can actually just create a classroom environment. So to sign up for free, it's just a simple click here to sign up and you can actually try the 15 day trial and then decide to sign up from there or you could just sign up for Toon Do itself. A little bit of information for you, a little bit of background. If your students are not used to typing in their passwords or generating a password on their own, I highly suggest depending on the age and skill level, you creating the account for them as you see, it already auto-filled some of my information. And it's very simple. You just type in a username, password, and an email ID. It does require an email ID. My students at my school, uh, we're a G Suit school, so they all have their own accounts. So it's very easy to register for their accounts this way. You do need an account for each user that is registered. So there are ways around that, um, especially if you're a G Suit administrator, uh, creating like student one at yourschooldomain.org so on and so forth but just to let you know in case you know your students don't have a email address but just to let you know that each one do need their own email id and the downfall here the reason why i bring up the password is that you could only type it in once so it doesn't double check that you type the password incorrectly uh take it from my experience if your students are not used to typing in their passwords and you have the email feature off of the students, although they have the ID, the email feature is turned off for my some of my younger students. Uh, checking their password is, it takes several steps to do that. So just a little insight, a little learn from my experience, if you will. I'm going to sign in to um, Tundu. And again, I don't have the teacher account. My students don't have the teach the 15-day um, trial or Tundu spaces currently at the moment. So I've just been working with the free account, and I personally have had no issues with that. So once they log in, they would go to, your students would go to, uh, tunes i'm in the top left hand corner and down to create a tune and as you see the reason why i love to do is because you're able to save your comic strips um this is great for especially if you're working on a project and you you need to save and come back to it at a different time so your students will come in and create a tune and for me i want them to create a tune that is three or more three or four layouts. So I'm going to select three layouts just to give you an example of what it's like to create a comic strip using Toon Do. Very user friendly, very easy to use interface. So let's dive right in. I always like to tell my students to work back with the background first and then up to the foreground. And the background is the second tab uh, and then from there, you have different subjects to choose from. And because my students are using this for internet safety at, at the second grade level, we always talk about where could this conversation start. And I want them to use their creativity and be insightful about their uh, storyline that they're presenting in the comic strip. But I try to gear them towards an indoor conversation, particularly one in a classroom. But I like to see the creativity and I'm fine with them using like an outdoor playground, them talking to their friends and so on and so forth. Okay, let's get back to creating a Toon Do. So uh, I'm going to pick a background and all it is is a simple drop and drag motion here. And now they're going to develop their scene. So what they could do is now decide what characters they would like to choose. We're gonna go and select some kids. And as you see, there are 12 pages of children that they can choose from. In different scenarios, 
different style of children. Okay, so I'm just going to pick this little girl who looks like she's sleeping at the moment, but look, I could change her posture. Make her nice and sweet. There we go. Okay, we got a little posture. The color just makes it from black and white to original color. And then I can add a character. When my students are creating uh, the comic strip about internet safety, I want them to present it in a way where they're having dialogue or conversation between two or more people. So I'm gonna go in and pick a teacher. Okay, without going too far into it, she looks very teacher-ish. So again, I can go in and change her body posture. I could change her face, facial features. I can make her larger if I want her to be taller in comparison to the student. I would click on her and show your students that you can actually enlarge or shrink each element that you place in. You can also clone. Very easy way to make a copy. To delete, it's simple. Make sure whatever it is, item it is that you want to delete and click the delete button down at the bottom. Um, there, of course, there's different elements. There's different prompts that you could be adding. Let me give you an example. Here's some of the indoor stuff. And you know I'm going to use a tablet, right? Bring that in. See, that tablet is pretty huge. And again, we're going to use our skill of shrinking it down. We can also rotate it so it looks like it's in her hand. And then there's other elements you can add in, um, different kind of characters, tune scribbles. There's the special, the Christmas magic, uh, open clip art, which just gives you a little bit more of a variety of tools to use. And then your gallery, if you pull images or create characters around the web. For second grade, I like to keep this very, very basic and straightforward. So what goes on in a comic strip? A course dialogue. The conversation between the two or more individuals. This gives you a brief description of how to control and type the word bubbles. So let's take a look at that the different styles of word bubbles that are presented. And again, that's a simple drop and drag. Oh, didn't mean to move her. And now I'm going to move the little nodule here to make it look like my student is talking. And we are going to enter to start a new line. Um, again, it moves sort of over the page. This is really large. You can shrink this down. The word bubbles shrink down just as easily. And it's a lot of moving and getting your characters into place and lined up correctly. Now, say they want to keep it in the same room. The room hasn't changed. They're having a conversation all within this classroom. Toon Do made this very simple of just making a copy of the image. And we could drag it here. And now it's just simply going in and making some adjustments. And now they're having a conversation. In this lesson, I want to pull out our conversation that we have discussed while watching the Brain Pop Junior video, um, as well as um, what personal information not to share online, what to do in cases they um, encounter a stranger online. Any important fact that they have learned about internet safety is what really needs to be into this piece. I wanna have the girl talk. <clears throat> And as you see, it's just a lot of moving around the screen, getting everything into place. Don't, didn't mean to grab the background. To never.
I don't even know if I spelled that right. It's off the page. Let's see. Again, I need to shrink it down. And I would probably go in here and encourage my students to put that on two lines. And oh, I did spell it correctly. There you go. Full of surprises. And learn to never share your personal information. I'm going to make another copy. Now this time, I'm going to change the scene up a little bit where I'm just going to focus on the student. And so to do that, I'm going to make the classroom enlarged. I don't really think I'm going to need the tablet in this view. I'm going to make the student enlarged and front and center. And it's almost like her big debut. Okay, so really I want the students to list between two and three items of something that they learned um, online about being safe. Now they can go in and list. Never give out your picture, your phone number, your address. Uh, if it's something like don't download anything without your parents' permission. Don't go on websites that your parents, uh, that unless you have your parents' permission. These are the elements that I'm really looking for for them to pull out as our conversation and our mind map that we created in Brain Pop Junior. The first step really should be um, to change the untitled to make it a titled comic strip. Internet safety, and that's just simply going in there and changing that. And now we're going to save. So. If they're in the middle of their um, tune do comic strip or towards the end, they're just going to go up to this main menu, save as. Uh, I usually like to give them, um, have them fill in the description, get used to that. Tags, we talk about tag um, words so others can find their comic strip. So they could put internet safety for a tag. Um, I would uncheck to let others redo, allow others to purchase this tune do. The bottom half is really up to you and your comfort level and how um, you have established your rapport with your parents and really the guidelines of what you are using this for. Uh, I myself would publish it to the world. I want them to be digital writers. Um, you can keep it private where they can print it or they can um, share just that with you. So I'm going to publish to the world just to show you what that looks like. Okay. Then you have the option to print the tune do when you're done. And this is great if you want to have something that's printed. For me in the tech lab, a lot of times, you know, the projects are on the computer. So I really want to show the uh, rest of the school or for parent-teacher conferences what their students are working on in class. And sometimes the students really want to bring home a paper copy. So it's okay to go ahead and print that. Okay, so going back to my main screen of the Toondoo comics, you can see that some students have been working on comics and this is when they publish it um, for everybody to see. So you can actually go in and view other students' comics that they've been working on. And when you are going to either share it or you need to go back and work on it, again, you would go to Tunes and then My Toondoos. Okay. And here's a cartoon. As you see, I've been working on this several times. Every time I introduce this to my students, I always go in and create it so they can actually see me working on it and to see what I pulled from our conversations and watching the video on internet safety and our discussions as well. Okay, so let me show you the difference between a published to the world as opposed to private. So if I go in and I click preview, Okay, other students or teachers ha can go in and they can actually vote on my Toon Do cartoon. I can go in and download it and save it as a JPEG. If you're interested in posting this on your website by any chance, you can go in and grab that code. 
okay? You can also post it to social media as well, or you can purchase a high resolution of this cartoon. So these are just a variety of ways that you can actually obtain your tune due. You can email it to their parents, all great. Okay, so now here's the difference between private. It will not allow you to post to Facebook or Twitter. You can still download it, grab the code, and you can actually vote on it um, as a personal level. It wouldn't be out, out there for anybody else to see. Okay, well, that's it. That's Tune Do in a nutshell. Very basic introductory. Again, this is what I use for my second grade. There's a lot of great advantages um, all the way up through high school. This, this is a great tool to use. Free to use. Again, if you do the Tune Do spaces, that has a little bit of a feed behind it, um, but it is a great way for you to have control over your classrooms in the classroom environment. Okay, that's all. Okay, just to show you really quickly, you see how the background moves around the little tips and tricks? You can lock in that space, so now my background becomes an unedited area, and I can no longer move it. Another thing I can do is flip my characters for them to face a different direction. I can move items front to back and give it a different order or arrangement. I could change my prop, and that's what this prop means. 